If you're trying to decide between buying a Chevy Tahoe and a Prius, and you can only get one, say you can only get your carpool sticker if you persuade the, um, the DMV that you're only buying the Prius because you can get that sticker. Now, would you say to the DMV, yes, I'm only going to get the Prius because I can, uh, because of the sticker, would you? And would you say to them, "I would buy a, a big hunking SUV if I couldn't get the sticker"? You probably would, because these stickers are nice little things to have, and you can ride in carpool lanes. And nobody is going to be able to say you're a liar. Nobody can disprove you because nobody knows is your intention really just to buy a Prius anyway, because you think you should have a Prius, or are you only getting the Prius because you can get into carpool lanes? And the same thing happens under the CDM. There's a huge incentive for all the developers and the con consultants involved in the system to lie and claim that they're only doing the projects because they can get the credits. And it's basically impossible to prove um, whether they are lying or not. Now, because don't try to read all this, all this stuff. <clears throat> So a problem that's uh, uh, created by this uh, very strong incentive to lie under the system and these unknowable factors in the system is that you need a very complicated regulatory and bureaucratic system to try and um, to try and vet all these projects and to try to show people aren't lying. So you end up, this is the CDM project approval system, incredibly complicated Byzantine system and all the carbon traders are up in arms saying this is a mess, this is far too complicated, you've got to simplify it. And the environmentalists are saying this is not working, we're still not keeping out most of the bad projects, so you've got to make it more complicated. And it's an inherent problem when you're trying to create a legal commodity out of something entirely fictional, you need a lot of bureaucracy and the system <laughs> snarls up. Can offset stop this? So, the, the project documents that are put forward to um, justify uh, the developers getting offsets contain all sorts of, let's say, manipulations of the truth. Um, sometimes the, it, it's a lot of uh, manipulation goes on of financial figures, which you can sometimes you're able to find out that basically people are lying, um, but it's a lot of work to try to do that. Sometimes the claims are just blatantly absurd, and this, the, there's a lot of them that are blatant, blatantly absurd. One of my favorites is a huge coal plant in India. So this is a massive coal plant. The sixth, when it's built, it'll be the 16th largest source of carbon dioxide in the world. You might think, well, why is that getting credits? So they're saying, well, this is a more efficient coal plant than the normal coal plant in India, therefore it should get credits. But it, it's getting built anyway, it shouldn't get credits. In any case, one of the arguments that they give in their project document for getting offset credits is that the plant will involve building a long jetty for importing their coal, and that the developers might be delayed, it might have time overruns in building the jetty, and the jetty will be subject to the vagaries of the sea. That's seriously what it says. Now somehow the CDM is supposed to stop the vagaries of the sea. <laughs> I don't think it will. So uh, what is the, the outcome of all these problems is that you have a lot of fake credits, a lot of credits that clearly don't represent emission reductions. Nobody knows exactly how many because it's so difficult to tell, but a, a recent estimate from uh, it's a well-known analyst at Stanford called um, David Victor is that between a third and two-thirds are fake. And looking at my own analysis situation, I would think it's closer to two-thirds than a third. Um, one th other problem is that even the, the Credits, which under the logic of the CDM very probably are not fake, not fake and probably really do represent emission reductions, are ex extremely inefficient ways of getting the emission reductions. Now, most so far, most of the issued credits come from destroying a waste gas produced during the production of a refrigerant. Um, that waste gas has incredibly high global warming potential, so if you um, destroy it, you get a lot of carbon credits. It's actually very cheap to destroy it. So mainly Chinese chemical companies that are selling these uh, credits are receiving uh, something like 4.6 billion euros, so multiply by 1.6 or so to get dollars. So 4.7 4 billion dollar euros is going to the chemical companies to destroy gas, which is estimated to cost them 100 billion euros. No, sorry, 100 million euros. So in other words, 4.6 billion euros is being wasted. It's just being given to uh, chemical companies, mainly in China. Um, it's an incredibly inefficient system. So what are we doing about all this? Um, so International Rivers, we're, we're doing research, analysis, and advocacy. Where this is a report that we'll, we just went to press yesterday. We'll, co we'll come out in a couple of weeks. We have been active and, and successful in getting large reservoirs excluded from the clean development mechanism because of the emissions from the reservoirs. So uh, that's a positive thing. We have 
got some quality criteria um, onto the types of, of dams that, that still can enter the CDM. A big thing for us now and going forward, it's going to be very important, is keeping the CDM out of the US. So currently it's only the countries that have ratified Kyoto that are using these offsets to, um, so they don't have to reduce their emissions. And the net impact of all these fake credits is actually global greenhouse gas emissions go up because otherwise countries have legal requirements to reduce their emissions under Kyoto. But now actually the majority of Kyoto emission reductions are likely to happen with people just buying certificates and not actually reducing uh, emissions. Um, the, but now this is very relevant for us because the CDM is about to enter the, the US under the federal legislation making its way through Congress at, at the moment, um, the, the Lieberman Warner Act. There's an allowance for 15% of all the emission reductions in the US to be met through international uh, allowances, which quite complicated in effect would mean the CDM. Under California's um, emerging climate control legislation, uh, it's undecided, it's not known yet how much Inter international offsets will be able to be used, but there was a, uh, a markets advisory committee set up by the Air Resources Board which um, recommended no limit on uh, the use of offsets in California, and there's some other uh, mechanisms in, in the US which also may be using these credits, so we'll greatly weaken what we're trying to do in the US to cut emissions, and we'll be promoting these, uh, a, a lot of um, uh, subsidies to, to developers around the world for doing what they're already doing. So, thank you very much. This is the end of my talk. We've got... Uh, there you go. Tip of the hat. Um, so our next